Yo, it's Wizard Foo, and I got a little update for you, game dev wise. The 3D voxel engine has dynamic shadows working and its rotation of the camera. I'm very pleased right now as a game developer. You should have seen how messy my code was earlier this week, but man, got it all sorted out. Really stoked about this. So still there's this one little issue where um, when I rotate the camera to a 45 degrees, um, a multiple of 45, I get these weird squares appearing. I think it's because the models aren't quite rotating to that camera angle just right in two dimensions. I'll have to figure that out. But I'm super stoked to have this whole, um, these shadows working and the camera rotation. Both of these are huge huge things that have just finally came together you see there's a little there's a little pink dot in the middle of the character that's actually the very middle of the screen i was trying to line up the character forgot about that and also when when the player stops moving his animation doesn't update until he gets to the next one that's a simple little thing um but just having the all the all the entities on the screen draw or paint themselves and erase themselves properly is huge and then having the camera rotation work properly and then all of a sudden getting this these shadows to work just like in the last half an hour of development tonight it's been amazing what an amazing day so let's look at some of this code yeah um let's go and oh oops i want to remember all the commits that have been done in the last like 36 hours or so. Here's where it all started getting really messy is I started separating out the um, render systems tick versus animate. Before I had basically all of the, the code for animating the entire render system. So there's a render system and a voxel engine. Um, but I'm talking about the render system here. The render system is a part of this game. And the voxel part is part of KitFu, where it can be reused for pretty much any game in the future, I want to write. So, um, the tick 3D used to be where I put, this is what, basically, this tick 3D function is called every single game tick. And then the animate 3D function is called every single animate tick. Um, the game always updates its ticks at a constant rate, and its animate it does whenever the heck it can. So you might you might be ticking at 60 frames a second, but you might be animating at 90 or 120 or as fast as you can go with some people's computers. So um, the tick, but the tick always is rock solid at the same exact uh, period. So the Tick 3D used to have all of the animation code. Everything was there. And so it was just a rat's nest of code to separate the Tick from the Animate. But I finally have got it. So the Tick basically just does its its most important things. Like it uh, might be rotating the camera. It might be updating the camera's position. It decides what entities are on screen. And then it runs a Tick 3D entity for each one of the entities. And, um, and this just, once again, it handles just the things that should happen in the tick, not the animate. And, um, it updates its positions, um, rotation, which animation key is playing. Like that might be like run versus idle. Um, and then it actually ticks the animation. So the elapsed time for each one of the animations is uh, elapsed. So it can go through its different voxel models and animate the characters and then um, and then re refreshing the model is basically just um, depending on the camera angle it gets the model vo the voxel data from the model and um, and rotates it or occludes it for the current camera angle and then it ticks the grid so there's the render system grid is what really speeds up the entire render system like crazy faster is by do ticking only the on-screen eids so you might I might have like 60,000 eids different entities out there um, and uh, only tick like 1800 of them for example it's just way it's a significant speed up increase and then, so then animate um, animate 3d is this is where all the paint the actual 
voxel engine really get kicks in. So in the animate, it's taking all that data that happened in the tick and then um, turning it into like painting the voxels. So it'll it'll run this animate 3D entity function, which is basically what this is trying to do is see which entities need to be painted. Really, um, if uh, the 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 model or for this this entity if it doesn't hasn't ever painted before it will paint um, if it needs the paint it will paint um, and then uh, this is where it ticks its health bar actually this might actually belong in a tick I, don't, I haven't I haven't even got the hit the health bars running yet and then this is just some debug stuff so basically um, what it's doing is determining which entities need to be painted and this is the this is the most important part here is it actually runs through every one of those ids that needs to be painted. And um, if it has a paint model already, um, there's basically there's the model and then there's the paint model. The model is what the current voxel structure looks like. The paint model is what actually the model that was used when it last painted. So because this is a, basically a hybrid software and hardware voxel engine, it actually um, um, it needs to run as fast as it can software wise. So um, what that what this does is it basically it it erases all the entity it erases the entity that needs to be moved or redrawn or whatever and then um, if it already exists and then it goes and repaints it determines which entities are actually underneath it 2d in two dimensions which ent entities are actually underneath it that way. And then all those are triggered to be repainted. And then so once um, once it's erased uh, below itself, then it goes and paints whatever voxels it has to paint. And painting voxels is pretty simple. This really just boils down to this e.render.paint function. And um, this is the render component. And all it's doing here is just looping over all of the voxels and calling the voxel engine's paint function. And um, it's really all happening mostly in two dimensions, actually. That's uh, another huge simplification, which uh, came about. I mean, that was that was what really finally made the render system work. With the, all the all these tiny voxels, would, was doing it with in two dimensions rather than in three three dimensions. Um, which can only happen because when you when you project a three D position to two D, you've got your x, your y, and then the z is the actual depth. So to it's it's really a little bit more information than just two dimensions. It's got the depth as well when you, but the two dimensional coordinates are um, just in the screen space, right? Your X and your Y on the screen. So, um, and then it also has a function or after it goes and paints all the voxels and all the entities um, for that need to be painted, it actually goes and does it uh, repaints as well. That's right here. So after we've gone and um, this is where we paint all the entities and then we repaint the entities as well. And there's the only reason those there's two separate um, maps which are looped over here. There's the paint eids and then the repaint eids is because when you're repainting an eid, you don't want to actually go and repaint any more eids. <laughs> this is a mistake I made before. I tried to combine these two lists and then everything went haywire and I was like, what the heck? Heck just happened and it was because <laughs> it was because repainting is was happening like in an infinite loop sort of so after it goes it paints all the voxels it casts its shadows and, the, and it's just a super simple ray caster shadow um, generator so there you have it there's the code that makes all this look pretty looks pretty enough as, as it is so um Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you next time.